Many people ask me what my favorite kind of fly fishing is. Though I love it all, I'm here to tell you there is nothing quite like the entire experience of fishing saltwater flats in tropical climes. Just like all fly fishing, fishing the flats has the ability to make you look like a hero or an absolute zero. That is what I love about the flats environment. It's hunting, it's stalking, it's keen observation, and guaranteed to deliver either pure joy or utter rejection. The highs are super high. Just amazing. And the lows can stick with you seemingly forever. So spooky these fish. Bottom line, saltwater flats fishing takes you to amazing places in search of amazing species, often with incredible people. Welcome to Southern Belize. Our hosts are Sheldon James and Melvin McCaleb. This is Tarpon Key Lodge. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is made possible in partnership with Tarpon Key Lodge. Orvis Fly Fishing. Trout Unlimited. Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, and Adipose Boatworks. Tarpon Key Lodge is a short boat ride from the small town of Placencia in southern Belize, Central America. Being the only lodge on the island and seemingly the only lodge within miles, Tarpon Key has access to literally hundreds of flats. Flats which are home to the big three flat species, bonefish, permit, and of course, tarpon. Joining me on this adventure is good friend Tom Rosenbauer. Tom and I jumped at the chance to flats fish together in Belize. We're on the make for all three species, and we will fish them pulling in a panga and stocking them on foot. Our guides on this flats adventure are Ernest Garcia and Carlos Ramirez, local Belizeans who have grown up fishing these flats. We load up and head out early with plans to hit the flats at the perfect time based on the tides. Well, we're leaving the mothership behind and we're on these pangas and we're heading to those keys right now. The adventure for today, after about an hour boat ride, our permit and bonefish. We pull up to our first spot, hop out, and are immediately welcomed by an immense school of bonefish. This is going to be good. Ever since I was a little kid fishing trout in Southern Ontario, I've always been a big proponent of less is more. And what I mean by that is I bring as little stuff with me when I'm fishing as I need. Now, if you wanna carry a big sling pack with you, there's no problem with that, personal choice. But we're here on the bonefish flats fishing for bones here in Belize. And this is all I have with me all day. Obviously my rod and reel setup, but I also have a box of proven flies from the lodge, recommended by the lodge. I have a simple pair of snips and an extra small spool of tippet material. That's all I have on me all day to catch bonefish and permit here on the flats. Bonefish are wonderful adversaries on fly. Found as singles, pairs, or schools of many individuals, bonefish can be tricked to eat a fly. And when they do, the runs are tremendous, peeling line off your reel, then turning tail and running directly back at you, all to do it again until they either break you off or they're brought to hand. This big old bonefish came in alone and uh, just came in on the flat, very shallow water. I threw the fly to him 
He came right over and ate it. They don't always do that. I only have a seven weight rod, but it's a nice bonefish to a seven weight. I wasn't expecting a fish this big. And, uh, but as you can see, the seven weight can handle it. Small flies, windy day. It's fine. I just love bonefish. They're the perfect saltwater fly rod fish. They're just spooky enough. They eat small stuff. They run like crazy. Sometimes they're difficult. Sometimes they come easy. But bonefish can also be extremely spooky fish, frustrating to say the least. Anglers can do everything right only to be flipped the fin in an all too familiar explosive ah. refusal. They are hard fighting and 100% fun to catch and release on fly. Often getting close enough to present a shot is half the battle. Wading in coral rubble is really, you know, 50% of the battle when you're hunting down bonefish permit and triggers. They can hear you, not only the water that you're moving, but also your feet crunching on the, on the, the bottom of the, the ocean. So when you walk, think like a heron or think like a bird of prey where you, if you can hear it, they can hear it. So walk very gingerly, you're in no rush, and you're hunting down these fish to get as close as you comfortably can before you can take that shot. And there's a bonefish right there. Oh, no, we didn't. And once you hook one, you never know what might happen. <laughs> All right, little chaos in the uh, <laughs> in the boulders here, the coral boulders. That's the way it goes. High rod tip, biting these fish, and then once you get them on, side pressure them to yourself. Now what happened was that fish took me under a piece of coral and came back at me. We had to run and get it, as you clearly saw. But there's a school of hundreds of bonefish here you know, and we were able to get this fish out of the school so that they stay nice and calm. And then we've got shots at more. The, the whole experience isn't ruined. Now, this is what you can expect when fighting bonefish is that they'll do a big run. No, 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 no. And then they'll turn and they'll come right back at you. So having a large arbor reel such as this is key because you need to be able to pick up line. That's a good fish, man. That's a thick bonefish. We've got 12 pound tippet on here. So lots of, lots of power, lots of leeway for this bonefish. Oh, nice, gorgeous, gorgeous big fish. How do you like that? That is fantastic. Now, one of the things that you can do when you're fishing bonefish and you want to get that photograph and not stress the fish out is tip it over on its back and it almost goes catatonic. It's not going to freak out. It's not going to do any damage to itself. You can unbutton that fly, in this case, a Christmas Island, and get that photograph. And then when that fish is ready to go, I'll let you know. The difference between here and northern Belize and even southern Belize is that a tarpon key are located, you know, close to the reef and right where most of the flats are. So the opportunity you have here is somewhat better than most other places just because of the location, you know. Most of the time we have a lot of tarpons right here in the lagoon, you know, all the permit flats are right around the island and we do have bonefish here as well. Um, so, you know, location is, uh, is one of the best. Arguably, bonefish are, you know, fish that you really need to do work on your angles as you're fighting them um, for a number of reasons. There's a lot of obstacles out here that they can get caught up in, uh, for one. And number two, they always want to go back to the school. I mean, the school's right here, and you need to be able to angle those fish left if they're going right, or right if they're going left, in order to keep them out of there so you can continue to fish a school of bonefish just like this. If I can get this guy unbuttoned, 
And back to the school. We got a good shot at catching another one. All right. Permit are generally spooky, a tough fish to catch, and that's what that's the beauty about it. You know, if it, if you can go and just catch them every cast you make, then what's what's the fun in it? But the nature of the fish, you know, they're just generally spooky and and tough to catch. You know, it's just like hunting. You know, so you gotta you gotta sneak up on the fish, try to stalk them, and try to put the right shot on the fish. Um, you know, and so many things can go wrong. And once everything lines up, you know, you can have a fish on the end of your line. Right over at one o'clock here off the bow, we're coming up on a tailing permit. I've got a little ways to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach myself how far, how much line I've actually got out. And this is really good for our guide too, because now he knows the range of the shot that I have. It also reorganizes the line at my feet. So I know that the front of the line is gonna come out first, so there's not gonna be any tangles. It's important to be as ready as you can for that shot, because on calm days like this, you may only get one. One of the things that you really need to keep in mind when you're on the bow of a flats boat is there's a whole lot of stuff going on. You've got tide moving, you've got wind moving, and you've got the boat moving. What I recommend is when you come to a saltwater destination that you're comfortable enough with your cast that when you see a fish, you don't need to take your eyes off it. Everything in your environment is on the move, including that fish. So when you see that permit or you see that bonefish, keep your eye on it. Be confident in your cast to know that you can place it right where it needs to go. We spot a school of tailing permit and decide it best we get out and approach on foot. Well, it's just after lunch and we decided that we'd make the short run out to the barrier reef. Literally a 25 second boat ride that way, it drops off to 3,000 feet, pure blue water. Right here, you've got square miles of flats and shallow water. We're hoping to find some big perms right here on the reef. There, there. My heart is beating a thousand miles a minute right now. <laughs> he wouldn't turn on it. Oh, so fun. We head to another flat and come across more bonefish. Got one. All right. <laughs> hey man, little ones count too. No matter how big or small they are, right? <laughs> Angry little dude. Oh, he's coming right back at me. He's not super tiny, but he's not a giant. <laughs> he's got giant attitude. They're giant at heart. They are. You know what? No matter what size they are, they're all giant at heart. Fun stuff. All right, let's see if we can get a big one. The reef, a short boat ride from the lodge, is home to many stingrays. These rays will sift through the sand in search of crustaceans. Rays are important to permit anglers because more often than not, permit will associate with the rays literally swimming behind them, scooping up any crabs or shrimp trying to escape. When you see a ray mudding, throw a fly into it. You just might get lucky. What's that? Is that Jax there? Oh my God. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> and all of a sudden, this flat just exploded with life. And we've got a bunch of jacks in here, pretty good sized jacks that are just crashing the bait all around us. It's crazy. He's free now. They're just such strong fish, but we have 40 pound tippet on here. So we're not terribly worried about breaking them off. 
we're more worried about breaking a rod or a fly line. He gave up pretty easy for a jack, didn't he? Tarpon Key Lodge is found smack dab in the middle of the seemingly countless flats of southern Belize. Four private cabanas, three literally perched over the water, are excellently appointed and designed for fly anglers with no detail overlooked. The lodge is welcoming and warm, with Wi-Fi if needed and cold beverages at the ready. The fishing is right on your doorstep and you have the choice of self-guiding around the island or using an expert local guide to take you away to your own personal flat in the Caribbean Sea. And how's the fishing? Well, there's a reason many call Southern Belize the permit capital of the world. The next day we load up and head back into the vast flats of Tarpon Key. We come across a deep giant mud line and spot a school of permit cruising. Do you want to talk about how sensitive permit's eyesight is? Well, this morning, Ernest, our guide, saw that I had a little bit of line memory from my leader from yesterday. He immediately asked me to clip it off and retie some tippet on. As the fly straightens while you're stripping, that memory on the slack is enough to scare a permit off. Secondly, there's my tippet knot right there. Now, the tippet knot is only about 10 inches away from the fly. That knot in itself is enough to spook a permit when you present your fly. Oh, yes! All right. We've been working so hard here at Tarpon Key Lodge to hook up with a permit. And we saw a school of them coming down this semi-flat. And uh, we just threw a crab out and we're hooked up to a permit. There he goes, into my backing, there we go. Now the hard work begins. Now with permit, I've only ever caught one, but I've had shots at hundreds. That's the way per <laughs> permit fishing goes. Um, you know, half the battle literally is getting them to eat. The other half is getting them in. So this is no way anywhere near a sealed deal. Now I'm gonna make my way up onto the bow here. I've got a little bit more play with this fish. Now with permit as well, it doesn't matter the size of them, they're all super strong. Really, really great fish to target on fly. Side pressure is key. Now with this line too, with so much line and backing out, one of the great things about fish that run far is that there's often a big belly in the line and that belly plays into your advantage to keep that fly tight into the fish's mouth. He's going back to the right, so you move to the left. Got my fly line back. <clears throat> Swimming to the boat, he's gonna take a look at it and he's gonna bolt the other direction. I can guarantee you that. There he is. Good permit. Awesome stuff. Wow. If he's done, got him. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic, nice. fantastic fish. We worked hard for him. But you know what? Persistence does pay off. These are fantastic animals on fly. Just amazing creatures. Uh. A 
Equipment used here at Tarpon Key Lodge is as follows. Eight, nine, and ten weight rods lined with weight forward floating matching fly lines. Bonefish leader is 12 pound tapered fluorocarbon leader. Permit leader is a 16 pound tapered fluorocarbon leader. And the tarpon leader is a 40 pound tapered leader, also fluorocarbon. It's our final day here at Tarpon Key Lodge and the weather has changed dramatically. The high winds we like for permit have all but disappeared, making hunting these fish a challenge. It's so spooky these fish are, it's amazing. Ernest makes a call and heads out to a deep flat in search of big permit, giants. It's a long shot, but the effort pays off when the flat comes alive and we spot a giant school of tarpon. I hate it when they're coming at you. Ah! Let me see if there's some out here, maybe that I haven't seen the boat, you know? One more cast, and then it's your turn, Mark. Sick him, sick him hard! Woo! Look at them all, you can see them all in the water, too. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Look at all those fish. Mark, so low side pressure. Don't use the tip of the rod, use the butt. I gotta get you off the, off the drop off. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Here it comes. In clear water. That's it, back them up. Doing great, Mark. Every bit of this 10 weight, man, every bit. Yeah, he's down deep. Don't lift up so high. Little, little, little pumps. Little pumps. Yep, yeah, little pumps. There you go. He's coming back up now. Here he comes. He's coming up. Yep, it's coming up, coming up. So I'd love to be able to tell you exactly what I'm doing to land this tarpon, but really all I'm doing is hanging on tight. There's jacks down there looking for him, looking at him. Right up so high, no higher than waist level, just little pumps. A little bit at a time. Ooh. We got 40 pound liter material on here. And I don't, he's been fighting for a while, so I want to make sure that I get him in as quickly as possible so that. There's no chafing that's going to occur on this on this leader such that we lose this fish. Oh, oh 
Oh, what a beautiful fish. Look how clear it is in this water. Just, oh, he's hooked right in the corner of the mouth, too. He's really just not giving up. There you go. All right. What an absolute thrill. Tarpon on the fly out of Tarpon Key Lodge. Look at that. Just fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that this dude is all right. Now, I'm here to tell you that is a thrill of my lifetime. Tarpon on fly in Belize, just incredible. Well done, my man. <laughs> Thank you. We have had literally hundreds of shot at Permit and Bones this week at Tarpon Key Lodge. But alas, our time has come to an end. I want to thank you all for watching. Special thanks to Melvin and Sheldon and the entire crew at Tarpakee Lodge. What an unbelievable time down here in Southern Belize. My name is Mark Melnick. I want to thank you for watching the new Fly Fisher television show. It has been an absolute pleasure. Remember, adventure is out there. And what a better way to do it than to go and find it with a fly rod in your hand. From all of us at the new Fly Fisher, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the flats. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now we're putting up brand new videos all the time. So if you want to be notified when a new one goes up, click that bell icon and it'll come to you as soon as it's uploaded. The new Fly Fisher is made possible in partnership with Tarpon Key Lodge, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, and Adipose Boatworks.